Okay, here's the activation switch that's going to go in the control panel mounted on the router table. And it works very much the same as the contact switch that was in the foot pedal. When I press the button, there's um, the circuit is completed and electricity can flow through the switch. So it's very simple. There's just two, two terminals to connect to and it's completed the circuit when um, you push the button. So here's the power wire that comes in from the battery and here's the positive side indicated by the red. Now to make this switch function we would hook one side, the positive, come into this switch and then when that switch is activated it would complete the circuit and electricity would leave the other side. But we have two switches that are going to activate this circuit. The other one is from the foot switch. So when we put the foot switch in the picture it works the same way. We want either one of these switches and here's the lead from the foot switch. We want either one of these switches to activate the circuit. So what we're going to do is join the positive from the battery, the power source, to one side of both switches and then when the circuit is completed by either switch it will come out this side. So that's just a matter of tying these together, uh, soldering them and then sealing it up with some heat shrink tubing. So we now have power coming in from our battery into one of two switches, the activation switch for the panel and the sw foot switch for the floor. And then we have two leads coming out, the negative right from the battery and the positive which is the result of either line activate, either switch activating this line. So the next stop is the variable speed controller. Now this was assembled as a kit and I'll show you a little bit about what's, what goes into making this and if you have basic soldering skills and really you just have to follow the directions closely you can make this nifty little variable speed controller which will come in handy um, to calibrate the speed of your lift. The speed controller is offered as a kit from electronic-light.com and it comes with all these pieces shown here. And I'm going to fast forward through me putting it together because frankly it's sort of boring and tedious. But it's an exercise in following directions. The printed circuit board has labels for each component. So you just find the component that you need, slip it through the top of the board, and then solder it from underneath. Basically just pay attention as you're doing it. Good instructions, good support from the company, and I've put together a couple of these kits and I really like it. Here's a close-up view of the reversing switch. I'm going to put a graphic up on the screen that explains how to wire this. It has six terminals, and so your two leads come in, uh, positive and negative, and then they're jumped across the two sides of this switch, and the positive and negative come out the other side. And so depending on the position of the switch will determine which polarity you're giving to the motor. So let's review where we are to this point. We have our battery, which is our power source, conveniently hooked up to its charger all the time that we can turn on and off with a switch. So the battery's here, plugs into the wall, and a switch interrupts that charging signal so we can turn it on or just leave it on all the time. From the battery, we go on over to one of two activation switches. So all we've done with these activation switches is interrupt the positive lead from the battery by putting it into one of two switches. And each of these activation switches will complete the positive signal up to this point. And the negative from the battery flows right to here. Which leaves us with positive and negative from the power source interrupted by both of these switches that can complete the circuit. The next stop is the speed changer. And the speed changer has four terminals on it, positive and negative input, and a positive and negative output, which goes over here to the reversing switch. So now that we have all these components assembled, we'll hook up the positive and negative leads to the speed changer, 
and then mount everything in the faceplate. So with all the components ready to go in the faceplate, it's time to put the label on the faceplate. What I did was scan this faceplate into my computer so I would know where the holes are and then I created a graphic that would label everything on the faceplate. So before I adhere it to the faceplate I'm going to uh, laminate it with some uh, clear tape and you can use um, lamination film as well. This just makes a protective layer over the label. Now we adhere it to the faceplate using double-sided tape. So what I've done here is put a light behind the um, control box so I can see where the holes are to align the label. I'll remove the um, double stick tape and apply the label. Okay, now we mount the components. I'm going to start on the right side and mount the up-down switch. The activation switch unscrews and slips in from the front and has a nut that holds it on the back. Now last up, we'll put the speed changer out in the end. And to complete the front of the control panel, go uh, steal a knob off something in your house and stick it on the uh, speed controller. That. The last thing we need to do is mount this on the router table. I drilled some holes in the top of the control panel so I could uh, screw the, the whole thing up into the underside of the router table. To mount the motorized router lift, it slips in bottom and the cord goes through a little notch out in this dust shroud in the back. So this threaded rod that's attached to the motor goes up inside this vertical piece and gets held in place with this thumb screw. You line up the end of the screwdriver with the drive shaft that turns against the um, router, the router, and uh, increases the height. So once it's in place, tighten that in. That's all there is. Well that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking to see the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics. You can access all parts of the videos in one easy viewer. Check out the photo galleries of in process work, measured drawings, and finished projects. You can also download files associated with projects. So check it out at www.eaglelakewoodworking.com.